All right, guys. Good evening. Everyone can hear me? No problem. Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Thumbs up if you can hear me. Okay, good. We're going to start our, our uh, lesson tonight. Our lesson is for the singles fellowship tonight. The girls are going to be with Miss Tasha. And thank you, Brother Jim. You're the guy in the center right there. We put you in the picture there. Thank you for being so uh, uh, helpful tonight with the, all the singing. And thank you. Janelle, and thank you, Urgell. Okay, let's move to our topic tonight, guys. I know this is what you're waiting for. I want to talk to you about uh, God's gym. God's gym. And I want you to get your Bibles quickly. Get your Bibles ready. Uh, we're going to be in the Bible tonight. Amen? God's gym, 10 disciplines of a godly man. And I don't have a lot of time tonight. So, guys, we're only going to go through these, the first three tonight. Okay? Um, they're going to take a few minutes to cover each one. Uh, but God's Jim. Okay, are you guys there with me? Um, to take your Bibles quickly, take your Bibles and then uh, go with me to, uh, let me see here, go to 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 7. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 7. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 7. And uh, help me out here, okay? I'm going to read verse number 7, and then Brother M, read verse number 8, okay? So 1 Timothy 4, verse 7, Ako, Brother M, verse number 8. The Bible says, But refuse profane and old wives' fables, and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. For bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is, and of that which is to come. Verse 8, Brother M. You just read verse 8, Pastor. Oh, did I read verse 8? Sorry. Maybe I, oh, I thought I said both. Sorry, sorry. My fault. So thank you, Brother M. Thank you, for your, thank you for doing that. That was a good job. Amen. All right. So notice a couple of things here in this Bible verse, guys. Um, I want you to underline the word exercise. Exercise. How many, be honest, Lung, you don't like that word. How many of you need to exercise? Amen. I showed Brother M, I showed him my muscle earlier, and he showed me his belly. Okay. <laughs> so exercise. Now, can somebody guess, can somebody guess what is the Greek word for exercise here? Doesn't it, can anybody guess? Jim, uh, you're, the, you're the Greek scholar. I'll give you a good guess. W try to guess. What is the Greek word for exercise here? Can you guys hear me? I think I'm getting potol. Did, did I get cut out? Can you guys hear me? Hey, hey, can you guys see my Microsoft Word document right now? Or are you seeing the picture? PowerPoint, PowerPoint Okay, PowerPoint. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so the the word exercise in that Bible in this Bible verse here, the word exercise is the Greek word gymnazo. Gymnazo. Brother brother uh uh Jim. Where do you like to work out? You like to work out at the where? Uh, gym. Person. The gym. But is it spelled J-I-M or G-Y-M? G-Y-M. <coughs> it comes from the Greek word gymnazo, which has the idea of a place of exercise, a place where you work out. So the exercise here is actually important because why? It tells us the very meaning of what God wants us to understand. It's telling us that there, is, there are things, there are disciplines we have to exercise, okay? Um, how many here love watching UFC? Be honest, Lung, be honest. Okay, anybody like watching UFC? Be honest. Okay, I love watching UFC. I like it more when the guys are bleeding. It's fun to watch. Just be honest, Lung, okay? It's fun when they're boxing each other and punching each other's face and blood everywhere. I mean, and they fight till someone collapses. It is great. I'm so glad that I'm not in there and it's somebody else. Amen? But it's great to watch if you're just watching it. But you know there's something that 
is uh, important in UFC. They have what they call different disciplines. The idea of UFC started because people wanted to know what is the best discipline. So they have jiu-jitsu. They have karate. They have kung fu. They have taekwondo. They have aikido. They have uh, – uh, what's the other one? Uh, the one they're always flipping each other. Um, they have all these different kinds, Muay Thai, boxing, wrestling, all these different Ruffle. kinds of disciplines. What is it, M? I don't know, whatever it is. Okay, so uh, they have different, different disciplines. And uh, to, their discipline is because of exercise. They're exercising their way to this specific discipline. So in the Christian life, there are disciplines that we need. I'm going to share to you three of them tonight. So if you're taking notes, um, you, uh, you, will, you will be very glad you took these notes. These disciplines will change your life. The first discipline is discipline of purity. The discipline, discipline of purity. Now, these are not my list. These are the lists of uh, Robert Kent Hughes. And uh, he wrote this book many years ago. But these principles still apply today. I adjusted them and I adapted them to fit our context, Dirisa Sibu. So the first one is discipline of purity. Sensuality is the biggest obstacle to godliness among Christian men. How many of you, how many of you think that, Pastor, that is true? Give me a thumbs up. If that's true. Uh, sensuality is the biggest obstacle to godliness among Christian men. And that is true. Um, let me see here. Um, I know some of you are listening, but some of you don't have good signal, but that's okay. Um, the fall of King David should not only instruct us, but scare the sensuality right out of us. You guys know what happened to King David. King David was a man after God's own heart. Amen. Case closed. Let's go home. But is that what happened? Is that what happened to his whole life? Did he always pursue after God's heart? No. Even though he was a man after God's own heart, he still had a weakness of woman, the sensuality aspect, okay? So that should scare it out of us. If David, King David, the man after God's own heart can fail, then guys, we can also. Put that in your heart, please. All right, guys, help me out, please. Uh, Brother Jim, why don't you read for us 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 3 through 8. Brother Wayne, Job 31, verse 1. And then Joven, Proverbs six twenty seven. And then, uh, let me see there, PJ, Ephesians 5, 3 to 7. Game, Pastor. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that you should abstain from fornication, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor, not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles which now which know not God, that no man go beyond the defraud his brother in any matter, because that the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also have forewarned you and testified. For God 